Let's build something great with daily interaction number 28. Hey, what's up everyone? John with Web Dev for you and welcome to the daily interaction series where every weekday we build a new interaction or animation in Webflow. In today's daily interaction, we're gonna build a button press effect on hover. So here when I hover over these buttons, we can see that they push in to create this uh, button press effect. Uh, so it's a nice little effect um, that you can add to your Webflow website. Uh, so this was actually inspired by this website here, uh, sema-marmore.at, where they have the similar effect. Um, so I decided to recreate it in Webflow. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. It won't take a lot of time uh, to build this animation. Uh, first, we're going to add the elements and then we'll add the hover effect. Um, yep, so this is what we will be building today. Uh, to view more daily interactions and premium content, visit webdevforyou.com. Also, be sure to subscribe below to receive a notification every time there is a new daily interaction. Okay, so here I have a blank Webflow project. And we'll start with the daily interaction class naming convention. So it's D dash the daily interaction number. So today is 28 and then the element. So every element on this website will have a D dash 28 in front of it. And this is for consistency purposes. And so that we know we're working with daily interaction number 28. All right. And the first thing I'll do here is add a section. So I'll add an element. I'll add a section and I'll give it the class name D-28 uh, section. And for this, I'll set it to a height of 100 VH. So it spans the full height of the viewport and it will be the full width as well. All right, and then for the background, I'll set the background color to black. And for display setting right up here, I'll set it to flex, uh, horizontal, uh, justify center and align center. So anything I place within the section will be in the center. All right, so the next thing I'll do is I'll add an element. I'll add a link block so we can link it out uh, to a URL, uh, a page, a page section, an email, telephone number, or a file. And for this, I'll give it the class name D-28 uh, link block. And for this, I'll give it a display setting of flex, uh, horizontal, justify center and align center because we're going to have some text in the center of this link block and I'll give it a specific width and height. So I'll say 200 pixels by 50 pixels in height and I'll scroll down to border. I'll give it a solid border, make the width uh, three pixels and the color I'll set it to white. Um, I also want to add a drop shadow. So here in shadows, I'll add a drop shadow. And for the shadow, I'm going to make the distance uh, 10 pixels. And for the blur, I'm going to set it to zero. And I'm going to change the color to white, uh, white here. Okay, and the degrees is 135. So as we can see, the, the link block is taking shape how we have it here in the demo. We have the shadow and the border and looks good. All right, so the next thing I want to do is add the text in the center. So with the link block selected, I'll add an element. I'll add a text block and I'll give it the, the class name D-28 uh, link block uh, text. And I'll just style it a bit here. So we notice it has an underline. So to remove the underline, we can just go in the navigator and select the link block. And then for typography, we'll say uh, none for the underline. So it removes the underline. I'll go ahead and select the link block text and I'll style it here. So I'll say um, circular book. Um, yeah, font weight normal. Um, I'll set the color to white and I'll rename this here to websites. Um, for the font size, I'll make it something like 20 pixels and the line height will set it to 20 pixels and the letter spacing, I'll set it to one pixel. All right, so there we have the button. Uh, the next thing I want to do is uh, create the hover effect. So here, we're, with the link block selected, where it says states right up here, I'm going to click the drop down and select hover. 
So on hover, I want the drop shadow to disappear and I want the button to move seven pixels to the right and seven pixels down. Because we have a border of three pixels, the movement will just be seven pixels. So seven plus three is 10. Um, and that's the size of the drop shadow. Um, so yeah, I'll scroll down to uh, the drop shadow. So we're in the hover state and Webflow lets us know we're in the hover state because we have um, this, uh, this selector here that says hover. So here for the drop shadow, I'll just uh, select the trash can symbol to delete it. And um, also here in transforms, I'm gonna click the plus to add a transform. And I'm gonna move the, the link block seven pixels to the right on the X axis and seven pixels down. Uh, so it moves diagonally um, down. So it moves seven to the right and seven down. So it has the di diagonal motion. All right, and that's all we have to do for the hover state is remove the box shadow and then move the link block seven pixels to the right and several, seven pixels down with the transforms option here. Okay, so now for the states, I'll select none. So we can see the none state. And as we can see here in the designer, I can hover over the link block and we have that nice effect. So here, if I preview, we have the button press effect. Um, so that looks pretty good, but I do want a bit of easing to the button so it's a bit smoother. So in the demo, when we hover, there's a bit of easing to it. It's just, it's yeah, it's not just a quick snap like it is here, although this is a pretty cool effect. Uh, but yeah, let's add some easing to it. So here in the none state, um, let's scroll down to transitions and transforms. And here for transitions, I'm gonna click this little um, clock symbol or uh, stopwatch symbol, so I'll click here. And for the transition property, I'm gonna select, um, scroll all the way down and select all properties under advanced. So the reason we're selecting all properties is because we're moving the link block and we're also having the drop shadow disappear. So I want the easing to be applied to both of those uh, transformations. So here under advanced, I'll select all properties and for the timing, I'm gonna set it to 150 milliseconds. And for the easing, I'll say ease. Um, you could select from these different easings, but here I'll just select ease. Um, I find that's a good easing for it. Yeah, you can do ease in, ease out, and these different easing options here. Uh, but yeah, I'll just leave it at, at, yeah, at ease. And I'll preview, and now when I hover, we have a little bit of easing to the button. Um, and that's it, that's how we create the button press effect on hover in Webflow. Um, pretty straightforward, we're just working with the hover state yeah, and adding a drop shadow and a border to the link block and then removing the drop shadow and then moving the link block seven pixels to the right and seven pixels down on hover and then adding a transition so we have a bit of easing when we hover over the link block there, okay? So in the navigator, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. We have the section, the link block and then the link block text inside of the link block and the link block has a display setting of flex, uh, horizontal, center, center. So this text is in the center. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is duplicate the link block. So here with the link block selected, I'll hit Command-C to copy, and then I'll select the section and paste uh, two more times. So I have three link blocks. Then I'll select the first link block, go into styles, and I'll hold down Alt and drag to the right for the margin and add a margin of about, uh, let's say 20 pixels. So we have three buttons, um, looks good. So yeah, I, I hold down Alt so that the left and the right side, um, yeah, the left and the right margin get added at the same time. All right, and then here for the different uh, text, I'll say website, apps, and branding. Um, and that's it, so now I'll preview, and we have the button press effect on hover. All right, looks good. Okay, so that's it for daily interaction number 28. Um, it was inspired by this website here, uh, sema-marmore.at, where they have the button press effect. Um, so I wanted to, yeah, kind of rebuild it here in Webflow. Okay, so here we have the demo, and looks good. So that is it for this video tutorial. Uh, to view more daily interactions and premium content, visit webdevforyou.com. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next daily interaction.